So if you've been wondering what you're supposed to do as soon as the signing service reaches out, this video is for you. I've included a link below. It is the exact script that I use. It's Maya the Business Baddie and I'm back with a super quick video and today I just wanted to show you what I do after I get correspondence from a signing service and what I do immediately following. So if you've been wondering what you're supposed to do as soon as the signing service reaches out and lets you know hey we have a signing do you want to take it and you say yes this video is for you. Hi Maya, this is Vanessa from Star Signing Services. Are you available to take a loan purchase tomorrow at 4 p.m.? Why yes, Vanessa, I am available. Send it over. Alrighty, we'll send it over right now. So that's usually how the call goes. It's like, hey, such and such, are you available to take this signing? Oh, pause. That is like my generic response when I'm dealing with my favorite signing service and that's because I don't have to ask about what fee they're gonna offer me it's 150 minimum I don't have to haggle I don't have to do any of that but if you're dealing with some of these other signing services and I'm not gonna say any names you know who we're talking about you might want to ask some clarifying questions if I'm giving you a real tutorial on how to deal with it from phone call to corresponding with your signer let's start over Hi Maya, this is Vanessa from Star Signing Services. Are you available tomorrow at 4 p.m. to take a loan purchase? Hi Vanessa, we haven't worked together before. Assuming we haven't worked together before. Do you have any details regarding the signing? Page count, number of signers, what type of signing this is? She already said it's a loan purchase. While I'm looking at my calendar, would you mind giving me any details for this signing that you may have? So the reason I asked for details is You'll sometimes be dealing with signing services who are well aware of page count, numbers of signers, etc. And they want to keep profit margins up while keeping overhead down. So if you say yes to a $100 signing but you're unaware that there are three signers, that's three journal entries per document in your journal. So that's gonna take a little bit of time to write out on your acknowledgements, on your jurats, on your journal, and that's for each document, in the state of California at least. So you really wanna get an idea what the specifics are for each signing that you agree to take on. Because if you take on a $100 assignment and you end up with three signers, or POA verbiage, trust verbiage, anything like that, you could be there a bit longer and you might end up being resentful for taking the assignment. So it's really, really imperative to get the details. You're not committing to saying yes yet. You're just getting the details for that particular signing. So we have two signers, husband and wife, no trust verbiage, no POA verbiage, and we're offering 125. Okay, and then what was the page count for that, Vanessa? We're looking at 126 pages. So 125 for 126 pages sounds reasonable to me. If we're looking at 200 pages, I might ask for 150. I might say, hey, do you think you could bring it up to 150? And if they're willing to work with you, they'll work with you. If not, they will say, hey, let me see if I can get that approved. If I can, we'll give you a call back. If they can't, they won't give you a call back. Definitely, definitely, definitely get in mind what that number is for you. So the three or four signing services that call me all the time are aware of my fee schedule and what they can expect to offer in terms of fees for me. So the haggling is no longer like a thing and it just feels a lot better than someone telling you, we're offering $100 and you're like, mm, I don't think I'm going outside for $100. Sometimes you're crossing bridges, you're like driving 30, 40, 50 miles for $100. So you really have to find out what makes sense financially for you and your time. So once we've agreed upon the specifics of the assignment, the fee, the date and time, that's when I'm pivoting, we're hanging up the phone and I am reaching out to my signer. 
So when I reach out to my signer, I do it first via text message. I like to have all of the specifics for the appointment in text format because when it's in text format i can easily click the address and it goes to my gps on my phone when i'm driving to that location i can see what exact time it's kind of like having i don't want to say proof but it's kind of like a paper trail of what you and your signer discuss that you can refer back to unlike with a phone call I won't say that I won't call, but I will send a text first. And I'm gonna share with you exactly what I text my signers in just a moment. I do enjoy texting them first, A, because I'm partially antisocial and I don't like to talk unnecessarily on the phone. B, a lot of people are working either from home or in the office and a lot of times you won't even get someone on the phone. So it's better to shoot a text and then if 15 or 30 minutes passes and I haven't received anything in response, at that point I will follow up with a phone call because some people don't see their text messages but your escrow officer and your signing service wants to know that you made contact and that you confirmed the appointment. So if my signer doesn't respond via text message, I will follow up with a phone call in 15 or 30 minutes. So this is the exact text message that I send to my signers and I keep it in my notes app on my iPhone. I don't know if there's a notes app on Android. I'm sure there is. If not, there is a great app called GoodNotes. Don't even know if that's for Android, but use whatever notes app you may have in your phone for android or if you have an iphone use the notes app and then what i'll do is i will place the cursor on the name and change the name out i will place the cursor on the date and time and change those out and then same deal for the address i will place the cursor where the address goes or where the address was for the last signing i did delete and then copy and paste the new address okay so what i type exactly in my notes app to text my signers is and i put beyonce for the example because that's who i thought of first so hi beyonce my name is maya and i am reaching out to confirm your closing appointment scheduled for tomorrow 7 11 2021 at 12 30 p.m new paragraph the address i have on file is 123 big money drive Oakland, California, 94605. Should you need to contact me, I can be reached at 123-456-7891. Can you confirm the spelling of your full name and address on your unexpired driver's license or other form of government issued ID, please? Thank you, Maya. The reason I ask my signers for what is printed on their driver's license is I cannot tell you the number of signings that I saved prior to driving all the way out to my signers just by reviewing the documents and what they texted me was the correct spelling of their names on their driver's license. I had one signer who had junior printed on his documents. He was not junior anywhere on his driver's license or on any form of ID for that matter. He wasn't a junior at all. I've had other signers where escrow docs had one spelling but lender docs had another spelling. That's a nightmare. You don't want to be dealing with multiple different spellings. So you really, really, really want to be on point and get that information ahead of time before the signing. Whatever you do, just heed this warning. But in this business, there's a lot of finger pointing that goes on and honestly, at the bottom of the totem pole are us, the notary signing agents. So it's very easy for them to make a top level mistake and then pass off accountability all the way to you as if it was your fault. And that's just the name of the game. Our whole entire job is to be paying attention to detail. So that means figuring in the time it takes to prep your documents before you ever go out to the signer's house. You won't always get the opportunity to prep docs, but if you can, I really do recommend you take 15 or 20 minutes and take that extra step. A, it just saves your butt in the event that something is misprinted. No one can blame you if you caught the error, right? And that point is twofold. If you catch an error like that, that they miss all the way up here, like at the escrow level or at the lender level, you stand out as a notary signing agent who knows what he or she is doing. And that makes the client want to use you more. So confirming the borrower's correct spelling of their name on their 
government issued ID or whatever ID that they are using is imperative. I will not leave my house without doing that. So stay on point, y'all. Well, that's it. That's all I have for y'all today. I just really, really wanted to give you that instrumental step that I do as soon as I get a signing from a signing service so that you can implement it into your process. I've included a link below that should help you with this and it is the exact script that I use for my text messages that I send out to my signers once I'm assigned a signing. So I hope that's helpful for you guys. If it's helpful for you, show me some love, drop a comment, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back with another video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.